As 2016 winds up, expectations are high that the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari will focus more on Nigeria's battered economy as the economic recession bites harder. Industrial growth is a key strategy the government is hoping to adopt to improve the state of the economy. My guest on this week's edition of the program looks at Nigeria's industrial growth. There. Thank you for joining me on the program this week. I'm Gloria Umezuke. President Muhammad Buhari says a 2017 budget will take Nigeria out of recession. Nevertheless, experts have advocated industrial growth as a major approach that should be adopted for Nigeria to bounce back. In our interview, the Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment speaks about made in Nigeria goods through the promotion of industrial growth. But coming up next. In the face of dwindling oil price, Nigeria's once thriving textile industry should have provided an alternative funding for government revenue. But over the years, the sector has suffered neglect and efforts to revive the sector have not yielded much gain. The next report looks at efforts to revive the sector. Take a listen. Nigeria's textile industry was once the bride of the nation's industrial sector. In the early 80s, the textile market was acknowledged as third largest in Africa, with over 160 vibrant textile mills and over 500,000 direct and indirect jobs. Today, the sector is a shadow of itself. Most of the textile mills have shut down, with about 25 of them still running at less than 40%. This is according to the Nigeria Textile Manufacturers Association. We've been talking about this thing for so long. Um, it's very close to our hearts. Close to something that we wear every day. We know it's a capacity to generate employment and we're looking for solutions to how to engage our young people. It's, a, it's a also a thing of national pride. Somebody mentioned Kaduna. Actually, when I went to Kaduna, I went. And you know there was this plaque where Mr. Donna had when he commissioned that place. It's so sad that we have industries like yours and we allow them to just go. It's really sad when we also need them desperately. So I just want to assure you that we're working on this, but we don't want to dwell on the issues. There have been efforts to revive the sector. Efforts like the Cottage, Textile and Garment Intervention Fund introduced by the Bank of Industry with 100 billion naira. The Central Bank of Nigeria also introduced a 50 billion naira for the revival of the sector. It is meant for refinancing the current debts of manufacturers in the CTG scheme and also making available to them additional uh, working capital. And it's gone a long way in uh, relieving them of their uh, debt service obligations to their commercial banks and also providing them with additional funds to jumpstart the operations and to keep the operations going and most importantly to retain the staff they have. In spite of the intervention, the achievement in the sector has remained stagnant. This is because there are other challenges affecting the sector aside from funding. The financing is only one problem. There are other problems that are very critical. First, the cost of input. And the input includes basic raw materials like cotton. Then smuggle goods come in at a cheaper, rock bottom cheaper price such that your own <laughs> locally produced goods in which you borrow money for, you use a generator instead of uh, electricity to run, and the cost of production is so high, you can reduce the price, so they undersell us. The state of the textile industry is not encouraging, but experts say that it is a sector full of potentials if the right steps are taken to address the situation.
In our interview, Hajia Aisha Abubakar, the Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment, speaks on government's plan to improve Nigeria's industrial sector. Mrs. Aisha Abubakar, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Okay, now we have the economic indices looking very far from ideal and, of course, a desperate uh, move to, to change the, the nation's economy source. How exactly do we use Made in Nigeria to improve the state of the economy? Economic indices from this quarter have risen a little, if just slightly, but are improving. And this is because we've seen a positive response to the economic changes that we're going through at the moment. And I say this because it's because our SMEs are seizing the opportunity. They've seen this as a time for them to evolve, for them to come up and start doing little, little things. So sometimes they say when you're pushed to the end, then you tend to be creative about how you intend to continue to survive. And we've seen this move, or we've seen this stimulus happening with the SMEs. And a lot of SMEs are doing basically made in Nigeria, local patronage. They're doing things with our raw materials. They're doing the value addition so we can start to consume. And we're hoping to find ways to escalate this that would help the economy move in the right direction. The very SMEs you mentioned, of course, are equally crying out, you know, complaining of lack of infrastructure to you know, continue business. Of course, we even have local businesses. We have a lot of them on the line who complain of lack of funding, complain of basic infrastructure to continue and even the government's um, not enough um, show of support to help them continue business. How is this going to happen? I think what is happening is now for the SMEs and the government to come on and align the activities with the enabling environment. Um, a lot is ongoing to support the SMEs. Infrastructure is not a problem we can solve today, but we're working on it. We're looking at creating more special zones. Uh, we're looking at upgrading some of our centers, our industrial centers, so that we can have places where we have infrastructure, road, water, electricity, at least for the manufacturers or the industries there to thrive. We're also looking at relationships with the Ministry of uh, Agri, Ministry of Water Resources, and Ministry of Transport, just to ensure that some attention is focused Obviously, this won't come to play until 2017 because we all know what has happened to our budget in 2016. But all these plans are, are, in, are, in, uh, are in the pipeline. Furthermore, in terms of policies, we're also looking at what policies we can, as a quick measure, we can to enable these SMEs to, to, to thrive. For example, we're looking at the SME broad framework as well to see what it is from the micro to the small. And one of the kind of support we've done now is, and the National Assembly has also helped us, is a local patronage bill, pro, uh, public procurement bill. It's gone, we're all waiting for the first public hearing where we all have input. I know even as far as the presidency also, a lot of efforts are being made for local patronage. But what the ministry now is saddled with is trying to assess the capacity. Because it's one thing to say, everybody go for made in Nigeria. It's another thing, after two months, you look for those products and they're not on the market. So we have to ensure how soon before we come out publicly and say, everybody go for made in Nigeria. And then, it, so it has to be in phases. All these are all in the pipeline. We've got a lot of challenges to surmount, really. How, 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 how do you think we're going to get there, even when 2017 comes? I said we're going to target specific areas. For example, if I take the textile industry, you have them in Ikurudu. What are their major challenges? Electricity, infrastructure. I mean, electricity, smuggling, major ones. We're trying to address. We're working very closely with the customs. And I'm glad to report that there has been some reduction in the smuggling of textile materials. We're a little bit more competitive because the smuggling has been mitigated to a certain extent. We're working all across borders. So there's a slight, slight improvement in the textiles industry. And our, and our people are telling us that, yes, there's a little bit. Of course, they want more. It's not enough to ginger them to go back into food production. But it is ongoing. How much um, work are you doing with uh, ministries? Like you just you said earlier that you're partnering with other, other ministries, other sectors, you know, to make this happen. 
What's the synergy like? The synergy now, I think, is um, more strengthened than it has been before because we're all on the same page. Perhaps because of the way the economy has been, we have all have to be on the same page. So we're working very closely with the Ministry of Agriculture. We're working very closely with the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Water Resources, Transport, you know, all the relevant ministries that we know can do. We're looking at targeted projects. We're not doing individual projects because we've realized that if we do that, we will not be able to get the kind of um, the kind of result or the kind of uh, stimulus in the economy that we would get. But if we all partner, as I mentioned earlier, for example, the railways, if we can do the Lagos Canal and completely, you can imagine the amount of movement of goods and services. The multiplier effect of that on our SMEs would be amazing. That's all made in Nigeria. But if we want to go and just do a, uh, a road somewhere that would not have a major impact, then it defeats the purpose. So we're all targeting the same areas. We're targeting crops the same. If agriculture says we're doing rice, Minister of Industry is saying value addition, what can we do? You know, and so on. We're not saying, okay, you do rice, and then we're going to go off and do something totally different. No. Mining is saying this is what we're good doing. We're doing um, iron, we're doing this, and we're saying, good, we'll now come up with a policy for you so that we can all be on the same page. So we're all working together. Do you also get the same uh, cooperation from state governments? Because let's not forget, the elites, the politicians, are the first culprits you know, when it comes to not embracing made in Nigeria. We're well, talking about the states. I can talk about Kebi State, see what they've done with the rice. You can talk about Ogun State, see what they're doing with the school feeding program. So everybody is keying into it. Kaduna State is open for business. A lot of people are going to Kaduna State to look at how vital or how, how fertile the lands are. So I mean, I think, you know, something about the economy, as I said earlier, something, when something happens, we all have to sit up and do our own bit. And if we don't do it now, then I don't know when we're going to be able to do it. Let's talk about now doing business you know, in Nigeria. That trading balance that we see at the moment, how are you trying to bridge that disconnect? Um, unfortunately, I think this is one area that would take us a longer time to be able to, to bridge, but we're working towards it. We're looking at the respective agreements that we've signed. We're trying to see how we can enforce them because agreements, when you look at them, tend to be fair and equal. But in the implementation of it, tends to be lopsided. And this is probably because we've neglected so many of the sectors and been, we've been an import dependent economy. So therefore, everything that we want to consume, we've tended to import it instead of produce it. And that definitely will affect our, our trade balance. But we're hoping to see some changes in the next two to three years when we've built more capacity, when more institutions are coming up, when our quality is accepted. What sort of institutions? Like the quality infrastructures that I mentioned earlier, we're having them so that we can draw up standards. Once we have standards and we're able to accredit our, certifi our products, then we can compete. It's all about being able to compete globally. But now, some certificates we don't have, some standards we don't have, and then the international world tells us that you don't have this, you don't have that, and that you know puts us back at the, at the bank benches. But I know SON, Standard Organizations of Nigeria, is working very hard. NAFTAC is also working very hard to ensure that a lot of these standards are, are met up with. It brings me to this, I mean, where, where we import goods, we have other goods from countries being accepted, of course, widely in Nigeria, and, of course, and when, when we do ours, it's less accepted, globally accepted. How do you want to tackle this? By developing the same standards. Once, we, if, when, once we're able to have standards, then we can take them to the international community and say, this is our standards. But we don't have the standards to take now. Okay, hold on with your thoughts. We're still with the Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment. We'll be right back on this. Join us again.